The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ had record closes today as we're closing out a leap year for February. So why can't stocks go down? There's a simple law here from Newton called the first law of motion. It says that a body in motion stays in motion. So if the things that have worked so far this year keep working, where are we likely going to go? Higher. What's been working this year? Almost everything. Unless you, unless you are Apple or Tesla, most things are working. Most sectors are green. Most stocks are green. And NVIDIA is up by 60 plus percent. It's truly incredible. And investors seem to be willing to buy the dip. Every time we get fear and greed, it's coming down to roughly a higher low, higher low, higher low. And we're here into extreme greed, which means that people are willing to lay on the risk. And as that happens, equities get bid up. And right now we're seeing extreme greed, which I think a lot of people are having a hard time believing. We also had some economic data out today. Uh, yesterday, we had GDP, the second most important data point for the week. Today, we had core PCE and jobless claims. What exactly were those? Well, uh, core PCE on year over year and month over month came in exactly in line. The previous reading for month over month was revised lower, and we got red for everything else like the rest of the week, which means we're actually softening. This economy is softening. So this is constructive. I think that's part of the reason why we closed at a record high. We were closing at a daily record high, which is why it went to a line chart. We're not at an intraday new all-time high. If we look here to the monthly candle, we're also going to be closing this out. And we talked about this briefly on the stream this morning, but here are the new numbers at a very high level. If we're going to go to a new monthly higher high or get a green light, we have to be at 5.11. Otherwise, we have a pivot at 4.92, and our key support is going to be at uh, 4.84. All right, so if objects in motion tend to stay in motion, and we've been talking about a pattern where, hey, if we just keep going higher, which means higher lows and higher highs, which is exactly what we saw in 2020, well, so far it's playing out. And if it keeps playing out, should we be surprised? It's called the first law of motion for a reason. Why? It's the first law of motion. Okay, so if we keep forming higher lows and we keep forming higher highs like we did before, even if people don't believe it, where are we likely going to go? Well, if we're in a blue sky territory, we probably go higher. Where where are we right now? Oh my goodness, we're in a blue sky territory. Yes, we are. So I know it's hard to believe. I know you might want for us to be lower, but that's really it. The reason why it's hard to go down is because objects in motion stay in motion. I'm repeating myself because I want, you, I want to get this drilled into your head. The other reason why I think this is really notable is because uh, Wall Street is uh, paying attention to this. Have we seen anything shift in roughly the last week or two? I would say yes. First, we saw Goldman Sachs upgrade to uh, 5,200. Then we saw JP Morgan go to 52, UBS going to 5,400. And not that long ago, uh, if we go back here to, uh, let me actually pull this up on the other screen for one second. But if we think about this, why are all of these firms now suddenly getting bullish? At the end of last year, meaning only two months ago when it was uh, December 31st, we heard from Tom Lee and Tom Lee said, I think we're going to go to 5,100. And they're like, oh my God, this like this guy's so mega bullish. It's never going to happen. Now here's the current numbers. They're incredible. And as we're taking a moment here, I would encourage you to please smash that thumbs up. Or if you want to consider subscribing to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. So now we have a street high of 5,400 and it's only been two months. So if objects in motion tend to stay in motion, that's another way of thinking about the same graph we showed you here before, where if we see continued strength and we keep seeing continued strength, what are we likely going to get? Continued strength. I know, right? Seems simple. And you might be a little bit late to the party, but uh, better to be late than never, right? If we look here to, uh, again, not that I know that this is for sure, but as we're hearing more evidence that it's 1995, look what happened in 1995 when we made a new all-time high. Oh my goodness, we went up by 220%. Do you want to be left behind? Or if we're still in blue sky territories, do you want to fight it? Remember, blue sky territories are bullish. If you're unsure, again, follow me on Twitter. Here's my handle. You can see it right here. I have a pinned tweet. What does it say? It's a template for this year, how to make money. What do we look for? Well, uh, don't fight the Fed. Pause is bullish. Pivot is to be, to be determined. All we've done so far is pause. Markets and new all-time highs. Oh my goodness, it worked. Blue skies are bullish. Chips lead mega caps. Tech lead spy. All those are crushing so far this year. Look, it's exactly what we would expect. This is what a bull market looks like. Okay, we have some assumptions here too. The uptrend holds and there's no lower lows. Again, 
if objects in motion tend to stay in motion, that's basically what we're talking about here too. If we keep going up with higher lows and higher highs, we're probably going to keep going up. What proves it wrong? A monthly lower low closing below the low. So that would basically mean that the motion is no longer uh, working. And just like back in 2020, we got a pause. We form a lower low, which means we're going up. Then we have a little bit of a blow off top. Then the bear market comes. Then the rebound comes. We form a cup and handle here. And I think a lot of people are having a hard time believing this. But here we are. We're going up. And as we look to uh, this data point, man, this is like incredible. We've talked a lot about this stuff on the weekend, so I'm not going to uh, to talk about that more. But stay tuned till the end if you want to see that clip. Otherwise, what I would like to do is to really just go through a couple of key monthly charts because I did update the numbers on this morning's stream. So if you want to see where those came from, again, I encourage you to tune into that. It's on the channel if you want to see it. So here we have S&P. And because we're so close to uh, getting to this number here, let me actually make it really simple because I started this card earlier. Let's go here to uh, uh, monthly for uh, the S&P 500 monthly card for March of 2024. We are bullish over 511. That's an error. Let me fix that. It should be 511. There we go. So if we're below 511, what does that mean? It means that right now we're going to be in an annual green light, which means the 12-month chart. We're in blue sky territories. End. We're going to be bullish over 551 if we're over the previous candle high with a monthly higher high. We're only three points off. We're so close. And remember, when candles close at or near the high of the session, what normally happens? Follow through. What did we get today? A record daily close, which means we should be able to get momentum tomorrow. So as I noted in, I noted in previous months, we're likely going to get a monthly higher high. The question is whether or not we hold it. So... <laughs> If we stay in motion and we're over 511, green light, we're on the highway and we put our pedal to the metal, we go fast. If we see a yellow light, what do we do? We put our foot over the brake, right? We're cautious. Maybe we're not putting on the size or the number of positions we had before. Yes. And then if we get below 484, now we're seeing that the objects are no longer in motion, right? The pattern might be breaking. So if we're currently at 508, and we only need three more points to get the 511. I would exercise caution. That's what I would say. Same thing for the NASDAQ. We're looking at QQQ here, and we note that we got uh, 441. We closed at 440.59. Where are we? Oh, my goodness. Sorry, where are we here? Uh, we closed at 439.21. So we're within two points or less than half of 1% to make it to a new all-time high. We should be able to get there. There are some things which are causing me some, some concerns, particularly the dollar, but this just looks like US exceptionalism where everything's going up. I want to see what happens here into the new month. And then finally, we got the 10-year note, which for me, this one is the one that I'm probably a little bit more worried about than others, especially with that uh, PCE print we got out today. We have a monthly bullish engulfing candle, and we're over the previous candle high for the 10-year note. This is the one thing that I do not like to see. So with that said, I encourage you to watch the weekend review now queued up on the left-hand side. If not, tune in at 3 o'clock tomorrow for the closing hour stream. Thank you so much, and good luck until the Friday.